This is Deborah Johnson for Women at Halftime, and I'm passionate about helping women use their untapped skills, resources, and talents to create their ideal work and lifestyle, making a difference in their second half. Well, hello, this is Deborah Johnson, and it's great to be with you today uh, with this subject, What It Takes to Be a Part-Time Entrepreneur. And many are interested in this um, as they either have had a downscaling of their job or uh, maybe no job, or they want to develop a side business. So what does it really, really take? So we will really dive into that today. Um, Before we start, I want to mention that it's still bonus time for a new way of doing business.com. This is the online course, great online course um, that uh, you will want to check out. And all you need to do is go to a new way of doing business.com. It's all connected together. And um, you will find information on that page of all the special bonuses that you get during this time as well. And it's a discounted, greatly discounted price. And you'll definitely want to check it out because I go through a lot of those automation tools and all of the things that uh, many are looking for, even entering into this entrepreneurial uh, venture. So it's it's a great uh, startup course. It's very reasonable uh, for all that you get. It's very, very, and very applicable. And during bonus time, you get a little extra coaching session too, uh, Zoom coaching session. So make sure you take advantage of that. So, um, and there's a free webinar that you get on uh, that page as well, new day, new way of doing business.com. So let's dive into this subject. Uh, working for yourself part-time and what it takes to be a part-time entrepreneur. So, and if you're starting a side business as an entrepreneur, this is what you will be doing is working for yourself part-time. You're taking the financial and the operational risk. So this is on your shoulders now. And if you're developing a side business or many call it a side hustle, um, where you can do online training, licensing, selling products, and, and many other type of services, there are so many possibilities um, to pursue here. So, you know, don't, uh, don't think, oh, everybody's, you know, everybody's chosen everything. No, there's always space for someone new, just like there's always space for another song to be written. So whether you're just starting this venture or you're creating another arm of your current business, there are some great principles that we're going to talk about that are beneficial for all part-time entrepreneurs. And um, let me define this first. The the term part-time, it's defined differently really by every person, job, or employer. And in the United States, it's working usually between one and 34 hours per week. And in August 2020, about 23.6 million people were employed part-time in the United States. So if you are employed part-time, you're also providing your own benefits. So uh, this has been a a big deal, especially here in California as well, in working part-time and in what, um, if you are a self-contractor or self-employed, some of those rules drastically changed. So you just need to see from state to state what those benefits are. But if you are working for yourself, you are providing all of those benefits. So today we're going to cover four areas and what it takes to be a part-time entrepreneur. Number one is mindset, which I'm always big on, uh, planning, consistency, and your network. So we'll approach mindset first. And this is one of my favorites because it's, it's really a good, important, good and important foundation for any business and any life. And when you're establishing your ideal lifestyle and ideal business, there's a real mindset, a little shift for many that needs to happen. And number one, if you are starting any sort of new venture, you've got to be willing to put in the type of work that's needed to get that going. And 
there's um, a certain mindset that's out there that if you're working for yourself, now this is not as prevalent today because I think more people are looking at it, you know, the reality of this. But, you know, working for yourself, you can have such flexible hours, you can have so much more freedom, and eventually you can. But when you are first getting that going, oh my goodness, does it ever take work? And there's uh, no substitute for that. And, um, it just It just takes some work. But the guidance and motivation to keep going will usually come from many outside sources, but the decision to work hard is yours. And um, it, it's, it comes from deep inside of you. You have to make some of those decisions. And uh, one of my strongest messages that I give to people that is that you are a hero inside. You have everything it takes inside of you to make this work. And, the, you know, call upon that. But it, it, it also takes a willing mindset to get help when you need it from a trainer, a guide, or a coach that'll help you keep on track to get to another level. And this is why so much of um, our professional development and, and the courses even that I have provided, I do this to help people kind of up their level. And in you finding those people that will come alongside of you and help you do that is really crucial. What it will save you is not only money, but it will save you time. And that's one of your most valuable resources. And uh, and I work, I even work with trainers. Right now, um, I had, during this shutdown time that we've had, when I'm recording this, um, I discovered that I wasn't getting pushed hard enough on just my walks that I was taking. I was getting outside. But I, I was used to going to my cycle class at least three times a week and really pushing with our um, instructor. So I ended up investing in a stationary bike that had a trainer on it and that was pushing me and telling me how to fast to go and telling me the inclines and, and the um, resistance that I was supposed to push against. And it's changed my body now for the better. So... And also when I was working in music uh, and also in speaking, uh, I've worked with coaches because I've needed that sort of push, needed that sort of input. Writing my books, even working with a coach, working with outside editors that will give me that sort of feedback. But I still had to do the work. I still needed to do the rewriting. I still need to pedal on that bike. They couldn't do that for me. So this is an important mindset and uh, being a part-time entrepreneur is entirely possible, but getting to the place of sustainability, that profit and growth, it just, it takes time, work, and constant evaluation. We just want that to happen overnight, don't we? Um, but it takes, you know, putting those small pieces in place to move forward, as you don't have the luxury many times of spending hours and hours or days and days on one project until you're done. And I know there are people that that absolutely have a hard time doing that. They can't leave a project alone. And this is another mindset. You have to be able to divide that up. And to, and if you can put those little pieces step by step by step uh, in place, you'll be in a better position than, than many um, who just start out on this venture and just think, okay, I'm going to just work and work and work on this until I get it done. You know, but that comes to our second point. So we've got our mindset, um, how important that is, that willingness to work, willingness to get help, and uh, dividing this up into the pieces that you need to divide it up. But number two is planning. Your planning will help uh, you stay right on track. And um, as as an artist, you know, I've been a recording artist, uh, writer for many years, the type of planning that is needed uh, for projects, it never totally came natural to me. I didn't think. <laughs> but then I noticed something. Anytime I was producing a new album, the system I put into place for each project, it made the completion not only possible, but very successful. And as I looked back, oh, that realization of all those systems I put into place helped me put a system in place for others as I was often asked, and still am, 
How do you get so much done? I, I, I don't know how you get it. Do you ever sleep? Those are the questions I get at. Get, and yes, I do. I, I do. But I, I do things in little, small chunks, and I'm very consistent. But we'll get to that in a moment. Um, but it's still a journey with planning. I have to stop many times because I get going on projects. But it, the planning is so very important. And I go back to Abraham Lincoln's quote, if you have six hours to chop down a tree, you spend four hours sharpening that ax. So true. If you want less mistakes in your business, if you want everything to be automated, you've got to put good systems in place that are kind of bulletproof or they're close, at least. At least you can test them. So in in automation, that is really true. And in working with a VA, that is very true. So, so much of business, it's looking back to see what worked and then you discover a way to systematize it. That's kind of what I did with my album production. And uh, and it's worked for me this way also with a VA, with my virtual assistant. I've discovered, oh, this process I put into place, this is repeatable. I can help people with this and I know how to do it. So, and I'm constantly discovering a new and more efficient way to communicate what I need to automate. And as I do, then I continue growing and sharing uh, with with my clients and with my audience. And I want to eliminate as many mistakes as possible. And it makes clarity so important for me as I'm in my own little journey here on planning and on productivity. So, uh, and I love working all, with any sort of a company or any sort of business that's also growing. That excites me. Uh, many that worked with me, work with me, know that I'm a huge fan of Digital Access Pass for my courses and for my membership site. And I have been with them a number of years and how they have grown. They've, and they keep growing and keep adding. I love working with a company like that. Also Thrive Themes, Thrive Architect. Uh, this is a wonderful um, sort of, uh, I've got all five of my websites on this right now using that Thrive Themes. It's a wonderful theme and a wonderful, the architect is wonderful for formatting pages. They're always growing and always putting out, discovering ways to do things better. And I hope to be able to always be doing that for my clients and people I work with and even in music that I'm putting out. But that takes planning. So number one, mindset. Number two, planning. Number three, consistency. Oh, I can't emphasize this enough. So um, just this weekend, as I am recording this, um, I was out pulling weeds. And <laughs> this is we've got some of those sticker weeds in our the back of our property. And they're called uh, puncture vines, or sometimes they're called goat heads. What a name for that! But but when they dry up, those sticker, those those little little tiny flat bushes, or they're not really bushes. They're just they're like a little ground cover. Those stickers are deadly. Oh my goodness, they are really really hurt if they're tracked into the house. I have stepped on many in bare feet. They're awful. So as we've been doing some work on our property, we are on a piece of property that had just um, a lot of that dirt in the back, like on an, you know, we're over an acre here. So we had a lot of that dirt and the weeds. I didn't want them just covered up as we're doing some of this now re-landscaping. I wanted to dig them up. And so I know that if I consistently go out and dig them up, like just 15, 20 minutes a time, I get carried away a little bit. Sometimes I do a little more. I know I can get it done. And it's not so overwhelming to just think, oh, there's no way I can get this done. Just start little at a time. It even applies to uh, digging weeds and and also pruning. You know, I, I loved uh, applying these principles to many areas of my life. And because life and business are just really connected, many of those principles. And But many people, I will come back to this point, many people struggle with doing just a little at a time, and they want to finish the whole thing. And this is hard for me too. I like to keep going. I could go for hours sometimes. But it's where a good timer is handy. If you are still working another job or 
you have other responsibilities and you need to be a part-time entrepreneur where you only have a certain amount of time each day a good timer, a little uh, like a kitchen timer. I even have a um, a specific timer that um, I have created for some of my courses. And uh, that good timer, it's just so handy and necessary because it will help you stay on track. I use a timer when I clean my office. I use a timer when I clean part of my house. It's it's very handy because it keeps you on track for those of us who have those creative minds that always think of something else to do. So create um, your schedule and schedule in that time each day, and then go ahead and set your timer. And it's this is especially uh, valuable if you don't feel like getting to a particular project. If there's something that you've put off, um, and we are all guilty of that. I'm definitely very guilty of that. Uh, but that little timer helps thinking, okay, I'm going to allow 10 minutes for this. And it's amazing. You may not think you can get anything in, done in 10 minutes, but if you are focused on one thing, you can do so much in 10 minutes. And actually, you'll wonder, why do I have so much time? There may be five minutes left after you've completed it. So you never know. <laughs> so, But just take that um, time to uh, schedule that out for yourself. And, uh, you know, I don't always feel like taking the shovel and, and digging weeds or, you know, un- undercovering, you know, all those stickers, or I don't always feel like taking this, this sort of shovel and digging in, in part of my business, the organizational part, whether I'm rewriting an article, it's so much fun to write, but the rewriting I tell you, that takes some work. I've done enough books to know how much work that is. And I write an article every single week uh, to make sure. Uh, also, if you're listening to this and you are not getting my weekly articles, make sure that you are signed up for those. They are just wonderful articles that really go right along with many of my um, uh, podcast episodes as well. But the rewriting is not is not nearly as much fun and it's not uh, nearly as interesting as writing it for the first time. Or updating an offer or doing all of the promotional parts to that that needs to be done, a lot of the the copy for it, it it takes some work and some thought. And so it, you know, setting that timer really helps me in a lot of even projects, even like that. So let's review here because I think uh, reviewing is one of the best ways to learn and to go back to that. So the mindset, first of all, of that hard work and getting help uh, if you need it and to be able to divide things up into small chunks. That's a mindset, first of all. And two is the, uh, the planning and how to put those little pieces. And, and if you don't finish one project that you've put it you know, to the side, we all know this principle, but we have to be, you know, reminded of this, that put it off for the next day, just um, go ahead and schedule it tomorrow. It's okay. At least you are moving ahead. And that's, that brings up one funny little thing. Uh, When we're in traffic, um, and I've, I've, I, I tend to look at life half full instead of the half empty. And, and when my husband and I have been stuck in traffic and we just, ugh, things are crawling and, and, but many times I will comment, well, at least we're moving. <laughs> and my husband got such a kick out of that because he doesn't always look at life the same way I do is, especially when we are in traffic and if he's driving, he's a little more frustrated And at least we're moving has become one of our funny statements now that we just say it doesn't, you know, no matter what traffic we are in or where we're at, at least we're moving. So if you have that, those little chunks and you are planning, at least you are moving. And number three, consistency, because this will help you move ahead as well. And just setting that timer. And number four is your network and creating that network and expanding that network. Um, and this really brings up the point that you can't do everything. Again, so many people know this, but when you're putting that together, it becomes a little more difficult, especially to trust other people that are, you know, that would be uh, joining your network. And so even though, you know, those who are self-sufficient, they understand the benefits of collaboration and connection. Now, during this recent shutdown, many introverts 
thought that working alone was like ideal. Oh, they're just in heaven. This is great. I'm working alone anyway. Now I really have permission really to see no one and just do my own little thing. But um, I am an introvert. And I will tell you that we need each other and we need interaction because I have missed that interaction. And, and I do work well alone. I mean, the, the definition of an introvert is not someone that's just quiet or shy. It is somebody that works really well by themselves and focused. And that's what I do. I put my head down and I focus. If you've not listened to the episode on deep work, uh, make sure you, you go back and listen to that episode because it's all on that sort of focus. Um, but we are created as human beings, flesh and blood, that we really need some face-to-face contact as social creatures. We are made to be able to have that interaction. And, you know, some need it more than others and are better at collaborating with others as well. Uh, Some people are just born networkers. They just are able to connect so easily. And I have some friends like this. They are so good at this, and they're always, you know, connecting people and doing all of this. and And uh, I'm working at that actually, uh, but I only have so much time. All of us only have so much time. But putting ourselves into those sort of relationships and those sort of um, the situations is is very very valuable. So, uh, and with all of the online training and all of the online. Zoom meetings that have been happening, uh, people are creating, are, are craving for that sort of connection. And, but some of them are getting zoomed out. Okay. So you're just seeing people on that screen. And it's like, you know, I, I need to be kind of this interaction so that, that there's some sort of energy that happens when you're in that same room. So we can't always get that every time. But, but now we are really realizing how much we really do need that. Uh, There was a great article about draft horses. Now you're going to probably wonder, okay, what does this have to do with draft horses? Well, those draft horses, I've always loved horses, by the way. I did want to get my own horse when I was growing up. My father (laughs) wisely said, no, I think we'll go horseback riding. You know, he knew, you know, that's, that's going to get old cleaning up after this horse and having to board the horse and it's expensive and, um, that, and, a pool. We really wanted a pool too. But then he saw my sisters and I with this very long hair and he knew, <laughs> he also knew there were, he saw the writing on the wall. These girls are not going to be swimming every day. They're not going to want to wash their hair every day. So anyway, but he, he saw the writing on the wall. Anyway, I will get back uh, to these draft horses. They are very large. I've always loved horses. They are large muscular animals that have been used for pulling, you know, great loads and moving heavy objects throughout uh, history. And one of these types of draft horses are the Clydesdales. And many are familiar with this team because they've pulled, you know, the Budweiser beer floats, you know, those um, uh, floats in the Rose Parades. They're gorgeous horses, beautiful horses. And I thought this was very, very interesting fact about those horses. A single draft horse, which are, you know, your... Um, large muscular animal, each one can pull up to 8,000 pounds. That's a lot of weight that they can pull. Now, you'd figure you usually see teams of them, at least two, uh, if not more, but you'd figure if you put two of them together, they could just double that. They could pull 16,000 pounds, but that's not correct. With two of them together instead of just one, they can actually pull three times as much weight, which is up to 24,000 pounds. That is a great principle of collaboration. We can not only double our effectiveness, but triple. So that is an amazing statistic right there. One word of caution is just to be careful who you collaborate with, and that's where your trust factor comes in. You want to make sure that you are, if you are really collaborating, that you've got this sort of equal yoke coming together. You wouldn't put a a draft horse, a Clydesdale, with a small pony 
and link them together. It would not make sense. It would be very, very tough for that little small pony and very frustrating for the draft horse because you couldn't move fast enough. So be very careful about that sort of collaboration, but how valuable it is. So to be able to do that to do that. So we've got these four principles here. One with your mindset of work and getting help when you need it and dividing up those projects. Number two, planning, put a system, some sort of system in place on your calendar, schedule it, even use your timing, your timer and consistency just a little bit at a time. Again, that timer comes in here, but to do it regularly. It's funny, I'm such a person of routine. If I skip a day, it's almost like I lose a little bit of momentum. So you have to, that's a mindset as well. I can't get too stuck on that. And number four, the network in collaborating with uh, people that would be at least equal and to be able to help pull some of that load. It's a great, great principle. And realizing through all of this that you are your own boss, you can set the rules, uh, you're an independent contractor or a part-time employer, and, but many start strong. But after the initial momentum have, has worn off, the journey gets much tougher. And these are the things that happen, anxiety, the fear, and very, very dangerous imposter syndrome. You're wondering, you know, why are people really listening to me? Why are they going to buy my 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 product and uh, work with me? That's that imposter, you know, not good enough feeling. They're going to come knocking, and they don't come knocking just once. They they keep coming. So, but keeping your focus with that good plan, a timer, and a schedule, it'll help you keep consistent and and networking with others. That's going to help your your mindset and keep you on on track. And it's one of the reasons why, you know, I continually reach out to others on and just times of just hanging together because you need to be able to encourage each other. There's no substitute for that, uh, and the and the rewards are just wonderful. So, and I wish that for you. I really want you to be successful. I want you to be able to create that ideal lifestyle, your ideal work, and start small. Start with that little side business, or if you're developing your business, put in more of these principles into place, especially with chunking things down. That's how I call it when you're dividing up your your work. So thank you so much for joining me today. And next week, we have a great session. You'll want to make sure that you um, listen in on five critical financial principles you need to address at at halftime. Five critical financial principles. Uh, And they're great. They're wonderful. And this is with my interview with Tatiana, love that name, Tatiana Sawyer. It's spelled T-S-O-I-R. Really interesting. And she, a fascinating uh, interview. Uh, She's been a CPA for a number of years, and she helps entrepreneurs and business owners become the boss of their own bottom line. So you will want to make sure that you listen in to this interview. Um, It is delightful. And finances are a very, very important part of running a business. And there are some great principles that we all need to be be reminded of. Um, We're not always learning these for the first time, but we need to be reminded and like, oh yeah, I need to put that into place, or I need to remember this, or I need to work on this part of my business. So... So I hope uh, as you listen to this, um, you subscribe, you tell your friends, oh, I so appreciate that, and and leave a review. Uh, and remember, a new way of doing business.com. It's bonus time. Uh, make sure that you look at that and um, you can listen to the free webinar that's on there and there's free downloads and it's a wonderful, wonderful course. So Uh, I hope you take advantage of this time. And this is Deborah Johnson with goalsforyourlife.com, women at halftime.com. And I will look forward to seeing you next time. So bye for now. Thank you for joining us on Women at Halftime. Visit goalsforyourlife.com or women at halftime.com for many more resources, downloads, and programs, or to get in touch with me. I'd love it if you leave me a review and tell your friends. So until next time, this is Deborah Johnson signing off.